Okay, so the point of this video is to introduce you to the spider programming environment um, for programming in Python. Um, so we'll be using this, uh, particularly starting in week two of this semester, um, of semester one, uh, and also it's the thing I recommend you do your coursework in, in uh, semester two of the course. Um, so up until now, you've been uh, mainly using Jupyter Notebooks, um, and Jupyter Notebooks are an excellent way uh, of programming if what you're trying to do is mix short sections of code with the results of that code and then notes and discussion around it. So um, they're an excellent way of, of if you're sort of coding in that kind of environment. And indeed, it's the thing I use when I'm uh, making sort of explanations of bits of code or running a little bit of analysis code. But once you come to write slightly longer programs um, that involve many uh, functions and hundreds of lines in, in different files, then uh, you need to switch to a, a slightly more um, heavyweight, shall we say, programming environment. Um, and there are a number of different options out there. If you've been programming a lot before, you may already have your, your preferred uh, development environment, and that's fine. You can carry on using it. Um, if you haven't used one before, then uh, the one I tend to use and the one I'll be uh, working with for this class is the spider uh, development environment. Okay, so um, it should be installed as part of Anaconda Python. Um, so if you've installed Anaconda Python, you'll have spider there already. Um, generally, you can just find it by typing spider in the start menu, um, or uh, if you're on a Mac or a, a, a Linux box, you might have to open a command prompt um, and type spider before you can use it, um, and uh, we can launch it. Uh, so depending on how fast your computer is, it'll um, be quicker or slower about actually getting yourself up and running. Um, the virtual Windows desktop and the cluster machines tend not to be the fastest, so there takes a little bit longer to get going. Um, if when you open it up, it asks you, do you want to upgrade? Um, it's safe just to say no and stick. You've probably got Spider 4 installed um, and that's absolutely fine. Um, unless of course you want to go and upgrade it. Um, but I won't be covering that in the video. Okay, so once it opens up, um, you'll see the window, uh, the program window is divided into several different uh, panes or sub windows. Um, and I'll talk you through what's going on with each of these to start with. Okay, so generally the, the biggest window, uh, and here the one on the left, um, is the code editor. So this is where you're going to type in the actual program that you're working in. Um, and it's just like working with one of the code cells in the notebook. Um, you, uh, it kind of knows what Python should look like. So if you hit tab, it'll put four spaces in. Um, it'll, uh, by default, it'll color your code in different colors, depending whether it's a variable name or a function name or a, a reserve word like for or if, and so on. Um, uh, and obviously got line numbers and, and so on. Uh, then on the lower right hand side, we have a spider console. So this is the bit that you can actually, um, where you can just type Python expressions in and it'll go and run it there and then in front of you. So uh, if you like, between these two uh, windows, the editor and the console, you've got what you effectively had in the, the code cells in the notebook. Um, on the one hand, you've got the bit where you can type code um, and then choose when you want to run it. Uh, and then the console is the bit where you can run stuff interactively, um, line by line by line. Okay, so then um, if we go and look at the top uh, window on the right-hand side, it's got several tabs to it. Um, uh, the one that's opened by default here is the help window, um, and this will show you information and documentation about the functions. Um, and you can see that you can, um, tells you a little message here, that if you're editing in either the, the editor or the console, if you hit control I, it will go and show you the uh, documentation about whatever it is you're, you're working on. Um, and you can also make it do that automatically. And we'll show you in another video how to go and turn those features on. The other tab here, the Variable Explorer. Um, so this is um, going to show you information about uh, your variables. And I'll show you those uh, in just a second. Well, in fact, I can do that now. So if I come down to the console 
here. Um, so as I said, I can interact with this directly. So I could just put a Python expression in. So three plus five, hit return, and it comes back and says uh, the output is eight. Um, I could also create a variable and say x is equal to three. And when I do that, you see it also puts an entry in my variable explorer here and tells me that um, I've created a variable x, it's an integer, and it's got the value three. And I could do say y is equal to 7.25. And it tells me I've created a float and what its value is. Um, and if I do z equals x over y, then um, you see it's updated it and it's actually showing me the value of z. So the Variable Explorer is keeping track of all of the variable I've got defined and what the values are. And OK, it's pretty pointless when it's a short little program like this, but um, you can sometimes have many, many variables that you can't necessarily remember what they all were, what the values had, and you can find them here. Um, and it gets even more useful when we start writing programs that could potentially go and change the variables. OK, so that's the help tab, the Variable Explorer tab. We'll come back to plots in just a second. Files is another very useful one. So this shows you a list of all the um, directories and files that are um, in and the directory it's looking at, where it's looking at is this folder here. Um, so by default, it's just um, somewhere in my user profile, but I can just change that to say, in this case, I'm on a virtual desktop machine. So M drive is um, a university um, file store. Um, and if I just come down, various bits of code and so on. And um, I have a folder for Python scripts and I have a couple of .py files here. So uh, Python script has the extension .py. So whereas notebooks were .ipynb, um, Python scripts are .py. And if I just double click on these, then it opens it up in the editor. And this again is another advantage of uh, and a proper IDE like this is I can have multiple files open, I can flip between them, um, and I can work, choose which one I'm going to run, which one I'm going to work on. Okay, so having opened a script like this, I now actually want to go and run this script. Um, and there are a couple of ways I can do that. I can press, there's a, a play button up here, but it will also go and tell me that if I just hit F5, it'll run that script. So I hit F5. Um, the first time it runs, it'll say, uh, how how do I want to go and run this? Um, so it'll give me some op options. The default is fine to execute in the, the current console. Um, you ignore everything else, we can just hit run. Um, and you see it tells me, it puts a little message saying it's run this file. Um, and now it's put another message up saying that it's put the figure from my plot, because if you look at my code here, it's just making a little plot of a mathematical function into the plots tab. And there we have it. Um, and um, I can uh, run that again. Let's just change something to make it a different color. Um, so make it green, uh, hit F5. Uh, and now you can see it's got two plots there, the one from the first time and the one from the second time. I mean, of course, they're otherwise the same because I only just changed the color. Um, and if we go back to the Variable Explorer, then you can see that um, those X and Y variable I had, well, they're now, because I defined X and Y inside my program here, is now telling me, and I've run the program, it's now telling me that, uh, as far as this console is concerned, X is now an array of 361 floats, and so is Y. Um, I can double click on that, uh, and it'll go and show me a table of all of those values. Um, and color code them by whether they're big or small. Um, so you can use that to go and uh, see what's happened in your program. So if your program runs and defines various variables, you can see what variables it's defined and what those values are at the end of the program. Um, it's got this pi variable here because I had a pi there. Okay, so, um, uh, and you can uh, obviously save and rename files. Um, rename your script files as you like, um, uh, and um, it will uh, let you keep 
a track of them in the files tab. Okay, so um, that's basically a, a very quick summary of the, the useful bits of Spider. Um, in the next video, I'll just go through some of the settings I like to change and some more about the features um, uh, that we've got here.